Hello, I am Baal Kadmon, and I would like to thank you for listening or watching this podcast. Today I'm going to read you two very short chapters from my book, The Daimonic Companion, Creating Daimonic Entities to Do Your Will. This has been one of my most popular books. I get emails all the time about it, how it's helped them, and some people needed some extra help with it because sometimes they're these daimons can be a little bit tricky. There's no doubt about that. Um, so today I'm really going to talk about what daimons are and the steps to creating them. I hope you enjoy it. What are daimons? As I stated previously, daimons have been used since the beginning of time to help or harm. Although the word daimon has transformed to mean demon in the West, they are, in fact, not demons although some can be malevolent. A very small fraction of the passages below are excerpted from my book, 72 Demons of the Name. In ancient Greece, daimons were not considered evil. In fact, they were considered spirits or divine powers. Ancient Greece thought them spirits of inspiration and goodness, as in the Greek word eudaimonia, which means good spiritness or happiness, as it is often translated. In light of this, it is hard to believe that this word would so transform to mean something evil in the Western tradition. Daimons became demons once Christianity became popular in Rome. As you may know, the Christian belief, which was derived from the Jewish one, that pagan idols and statues of any kind were presentations of evil, especially those of ancient gods. That is because the Romans and the Greeks believed that daimons inhabited those statues. As Robin Lane Fox puts it, like pagans, Christians still sensed and saw the gods and their power, and as something they had to assume lay behind it. By an easy traditional shift of opinion, they turned these pagan daimonies into malevolent demons, the troop of Satan. Far into the Byzantine period, Christians eyed their city's old pagan statuary as a seat of the demon's presence. It was no longer beautiful. It was infested. Robin Lane Fox, Pagans and Christians, 1989, page 137. In the Greek translation of the Bible called the Septuagint, the word daimon first became associated with evil because it was associated with the gods of the ancient Semitic religions. This later passed on to other translations and eventually took on its evil definition and called demon. In ancient Greece, there's also evidence that daimons were used in the Minoans and Mycenaeans as well, circa 1500 to 1100 BC. Mainly at the hands of the philosophers like Plato, daimons were classified into two categories, those with good intent and those with malevolent intent. The ones that were good were called eudaimon, or noble in spirit, and the evil ones were known as kakodaimon, which literally translate into malevolent spirit. As I stated above, they aren't technically angels or demons in the proper sense. However, they can be loosely associated to the West's conceptions of angels and demons. Angels and demons are the only real comparison that can be made. The Western traditions don't really have daimons in the way that the ancient Greeks viewed them to be. I think a better comparison would be the jinn of Arabic lore. They are genies for lack of a better term. It is these two classes of daimon we will be most interested in. In the next two chapters, I will briefly explain the differences between the eudaimon and the kakodaimon. The Steps to Creating a Daimon In order to tap into the powers of these daimons, we need to follow a few very simple steps. Unlike other books on this topic, we will not be doing anything elaborate or time-consuming. These energies are spiritual and are not subject to human temperaments. It is silly to assume that we need to cast circles and point to the various directions in order to summon them. Do you really think a circle of salt with a few names of God are going to contain these energies? It won't. Most rituals are used to anchor the mind, but they do nothing to the spirits. 
In the sessions that will follow, we will create diamonds for the subjugation of your enemies, the binding of people to your will, and to create storms, as well as protection, riches, and love. You can create a single diamond if you like, but I will separate it out for the sake of ease and understanding. As a side note, you will only need to do these rituals once. Here are the steps. 1. Light the incense and the candles. 2. State out loud or in silence the intent of the daimon you will be creating. 3. Place the offer of meat, egg, or flowers on the altar, in the center preferably. 4. Say the specific prayer I will itemize for each session. 5. Sit quiet and allow the daimon to show itself in your mind or perhaps in front of you. 6. Give it a name or let it give you its name. 7. Tell the daimon to do what you created it to do. You can say the prayer above again if you like, but at this point it is under your control. 8. Finish with saying, let it be done. 9. You may cast the offerings to nature and let nature take its course on them. 10. Make sure to remember the name of the daimon. You will simply need to mention the name in your mind or out loud in order to call it from now on. There you have it, my friends. Two chapters from my book, The Daimonic Companion. Uh, this book is available on Amazon.com uh, in paperback, Kindle, and audiobook. Uh, in it, of course, I discuss several rituals, so you don't want to miss that. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. See you soon. So mote it be.